All right, so we are continuing. This is part two of five things that you can do in Google Docs. And I'm going to give you the link to the slide if you would like it. And if you would start a new Google Doc so you can try these out, that would be awesome. So if you'll go to docs.new or however you like to create a Google Doc. Oh, I like docs.new. Doesn't really matter. Just be looking at a blank new Google Doc. Shall you got one? All right, so I'm going to go real quickly through the last five, and we're going to pick up on number six today. So the last time we did five things, it was that you can insert an image from camera. So when you add image, there's the webcam option. You can stick selfies right in your Google Doc. When you do that, consider using a table because they're going to resize to the table size, which is very nice. You can view comments in the document so you don't have to scroll the whole thing. Like, has my teacher given me any feedback? So you click up on the comments icon. Uh, that we could change our bullet points to emojis. And this is one of my favorites is I always use headings. I don't change the font size. I change it to headings as it automatically populates the document outline. So our first tip for today is that you should just start typing on your Google Doc. The first thing, you just now have opened up a brand new document. So start typing what is your document, and then you're gonna click in the upper left where it says Untitled Document, and it's just going to name your document like that. So here it says Untitled Document. I'm gonna type directions for the activity. And what we learned last time is that we should use, not just make it bigger, we should use the headings. But I don't want to do that because I don't want to give you the impression that you need to make a heading out of it. So before I do it, the first line of my Google Doc, whatever that is, if I click on the upper left, becomes the document title. So it saves you a little step because a lot of times they do match, right? Not always. A lot of times they do. Let's do what we did last time is change it from normal text to either heading one or title so that when you view and you show the document outline, show document outline, that it automatically populates the outline because I have it as title, headers, things like that. And those are clickable, so it's nice. Okay, my next one is to use suggestion mode, and I put this in here for a couple of reasons. One, I don't think a lot of people know about it, but two, it's brand new in the fact that now when you do a comment, do you remember when you would highlight text, it would give you a circle with a plus icon in it? It now gives you this dual options. So if on your Google Doc, you would please highlight anything. And you'll highlight and you'll see that on the right hand side it now has two buttons to add comment or to suggest edits. So this makes me really happy because frankly it's rude to change somebody's writing. If I type on a Google Doc and then you type on a Google Doc and you're like, oh Alice, I think we should word it this way. Like we're writing an activity or a lesson for kids and I write the directions or the things a certain way and you just change it. That's rude. So what we want to do instead is use Suggest Edits. I'm writing a book right now about Jamboard with Kim Matina, and we've got, it's 50 things you can do with Jamboard, right? So if she goes in and she works on the document, how do I know what she added and whether or not I like it or if I have a comment on it? Because it's long. It's super long. So, I mean, you could argue you could go into version history, but I don't have time for that. I don't want to go see where the versions are and what versions were made. What happens is we always use suggest edits. So you'll see in the upper right hand corner that didn't seem to do anything, but it switches me from editing mode to suggesting mode. So now when I type on this document, it puts my things that I type in as a suggestion. And so if you are collaborating on something, 
I do all of my work in suggestion mode, and then it's my partner's responsibility to approve the edits or comment on them, and we come to an agreement about how we write it without just putting stuff on there like I'm the king. So as you work with student work and you're giving feedback, obviously suggestion mode is really helpful that you want to give them suggestions for how to write it better as opposed to just comments on the side. But it's rude to change somebody's work. So when you highlight, oh, that's interesting. It just says add comment. What happened? Oh, because I'm already in suggestion mode. Mm, interesting. So at the upper right, you can toggle it back to editing mode. Do you see it looks like a pencil? It looks like a chalkboard with pencil. Go back to pencil. I almost never use viewing. But you could. I use suggesting and editing most often. Questions? Okay. All right. Number eight is paste special. So I'm going to go to alicekeeler.com. And you'll see that I have lots of purple on my website. So I'm going to highlight some things. Come on. And when I come back to my Google Doc, oops, I'm going to take it out of suggestion mode, be in editing mode. If I control V paste, it's going to do it. Control V. No, I didn't highlight. Come here. Copy. Oh, there it is. Okay, so you see every, all this. It's this is blue and this is purple, and it doesn't really look like my document. So I'm going to do Control Z, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my font to be this Sedgwick Avenue display. I'm going to make it much larger font. And I'm going to make it hot pink. So again, I'm going to go get a smaller sample here off of my website. If I paste, you'll see that it's not hot pink. It's not Sedgwick display. Uh, it's not big. This is the font and formatting from my website. So Control Z. If instead I hold down the Shift key when I paste, so Control Shift V, you'll see that it copies excuse me, paste at the destination formatting. So whatever I'm in there with, it's going to match. So if you'd like to go to my website, here it is, I'm gonna put it in the chat. But if you would just copy something from somewhere, and then when you paste in the Google Doc, Control-Shift-V helps you to match your formatting so you're not doing so much work when you copy and paste. Don't teach that to the kids. One of the ways that I know they cheat is because they leave it in a completely different font. Yeah. Okay, questions about pay special? It's control V, but you're holding down the shift key to do that. You can do autocomplete that is customized. I don't know if you know this, but you know when you're in the Google Doc and you type I say copyright 2020. We see that it's switched to copyright, except it's in a funky font. So let's, right, switches it to copyright. Parentheses open. It's, this is the autocomplete. I do one half, it switches it to one half. But you could actually do this with anything you want. So if you go to tools and you go to preferences, you have all these options in here, like does, do you want to automatically capitalize? Do you want to use smart quotes where they bend in instead of being straight? So you can choose those. But you go to the Substitutions tab. And on the Substitutions tab, I can say, now what I try to do is use things I would never use. Like, you would never use V and B together, right? So I would recommend you don't use, like, CH, because every time you write channel or change, it's going to autocomplete the CH into something else. So I'm going to say if I start typing VB, that it would actually say you need to use a proper noun and punctuation. So those comments that you frequently leave, 
So I type the VB in space, and you see it replaces it. VB space. And so things that you type a lot, common phrases, if you make yourself a little shortcut. So you're going to go to, I'm going to give you a minute to play. So if you go to Tools and Preferences, Tools Menu and Preferences, go to Substitutions. I'm going to delete mine because I don't really want this. See, I have ZM. This looks great, so I'm going to try that one. ZM space. does not work in the comments, you'll notice. It only works in the actual document itself. With that ZM, I made it up. I just highly encourage you to pick letters, combinations for your shortcut that you would never normally use. It's Z and then pretty much anything that's not a vowel would be a great choice. Same with V. Yeah, that's the problem, Lauren. You have to remember the shortcuts. But remember, you made it. So it makes it a little bit easier because unlike regular keyboard shortcuts. So the keyboard shortcut for version history is control, oops, control, alt, shift, H. How are you going to remember that? Control, shift, H is version history. And so I'm like, I'm like, I don't get that. Why does that work? Um, yeah, why does that work? So uh, you gotta like struggle to remember the control, the alt, the shift, and the H to open up version history. Um, so in this case, you at least got to pick something that made somewhat sense to you or some sort of a pattern. You maybe you started with Z and then you put, um, so like Z happy and then all right preferences substitutions Z happy I just pick a keyword and it would replace it. So maybe, you know, it's obviously faster if you just do a two-letter combination, but maybe you just want to use a keyword where you consistently put Z in front of it, because you wouldn't do that on accident. And then that would create your autocompletes. I'm gonna get rid of that, because I actually don't want it. Duh. Okay, all right. Did you get to work? Michelle, you got to work? Go mute. I'll practice. Okay, you're in practice. Sounds good. Well, I only have one more, and that's that you can yell at people. So if you use the format menu and you go to text, you can actually choose how you capitalize. Because I like to use camel case a lot. So like part one. And I'm like, shoot, I usually make the O capitalized. So I mess that up quite often where I'm meaning to like do the camel case where every first letter is capitalized. So if you go to the tools menu and you go to, excuse me, format menu, text, format, text, capitalization, you can make them all uppercase, format, text, capitalization. You can make it title case or camel case, same thing. That saves me a lot, especially if I've copy and pasted and somebody's typed it differently than I normally do. Then I can switch it to all lowercase, all uppercase, or title case. All right, give it a try. Type something. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go to the format menu, text, capitalization, and I'm going to choose title case. And so now every letter in those words, the first letter is capitalized. All right, so here's the litmus test. And I have a feeling the answer for Tasha is none. How many out of the five did you not know? So give me, chat it in the chat. So this is my challenge when I have to make a list. I got to 
I gotta guess. What do you know? What do you not know? And just don't assume. I think, all right, Tasha, I'll take one because I know that you know a lot of this. I just didn't know where to find uh, the capitalization. I know where it is in Word. I just hadn't searched far enough in uh, Docs. Yeah, and they've changed it recently where they you see the menu is collapsed up, so it's under text. It used to just be their own, just sitting there under form formatting. So then they made this text option, so it takes longer to find the superscript sub subscript. Although you notice that most of those have a keyboard shortcut. The capitalization doesn't, and it's a relatively new feature. Can you use that in, is it there in uh, slides? That is a good question. Yep. I never use the menus. I'm like, wait, I can set the color in the menu? I've never noticed that before. All right. Okay, well, that is my five that I have for this time. Well, you know, for that format one, that last one, you have to go and Go to the document to do it. This is this is slides. Oh no, that yeah, let people want number ten. So yeah, like the kids were putting table of contents and it was small C, so they just run through that and go format and they can change it. Right under format. Oh. Okay. Change it to uppercase or title case if they're doing okay. contents with a lowercase C. So that just yeah. fix it real quick. Oh, okay, that's what. It, okay, yeah, they're making the error last week. Table of contents with a small C. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All of them did that. 